NFL Sunday Ticket is now on YouTube and YouTube TV, which means that you can stay close to your team even if you don't live in their town. Like, maybe you're a Raven who married a Seahawk who got a job in the land of the Falcons. With NFL Sunday Ticket, you can watch your team's out-of-market Sunday afternoon games no matter where you live because you shouldn't have to change teams even if you change towns. NFL Sunday Ticket, now on YouTube and YouTube TV. Go to youtube.com slash presale to get $50 off. Terms and embargoes apply. Offer ends 919. No refund. Subscription auto renews. Hey, what's going on, Giants fans? Welcome to the latest episode of our Talk is Cheap podcast. Daryl Slater here with Bob Brookover. Well, uh, of course, NJ Advanced Media, the Star Ledger, NJ.com, you know, our whole spiel by now if you listen to this podcast. Uh, so we we did we did record a little bit earlier, uh, started to had had some glitches, but and scrapped it after about 10 minutes. But um, we're starting over, honestly, now because we were recording before Brian Dable's pre- press conference, his Zoom call. He usually doesn't say much on those, but to- today he did. So we had to write some things. And now here we are. It's about 2.15 on the East Coast where I am in New Jersey. Bob's in Arizona with the Giants. And it's about 11, 11.15 there in the morning. So, Bob, good afternoon. Good morning to you. How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Yes, it was a little surprising. We got some news out of a... Uh... Today, although I think we're playing a little game of bluff, poker bluff. Like anyway, <laughs> so you you can you can take that and roll with it. <laughs> yeah, so so we'll launch right into it. Obviously, this is our first podcast since the Giants' epic win on Sunday, um, and we'll discuss that certainly. Um, but of course, at the end of that game, and the Giants' second to last offensive play, Saquon Barkley sprains his ankle. It's a lateral low ankle sprain, less serious than the high ankle sprain uh, is, but, you know, remember he missed four games in 2021 with a low ankle sprain. Uh, it would, was assumed that he would miss at least a couple games with this, with this ankle sprain, but Brian Dable today, a uh, Tuesday, as we're talking shortly, shortly ago, he said that, you know, he wouldn't roll him out just yet. He's made a lot of progress. I think he's just really, that's what he said. He repeated that a bunch of times. Um, everyone's a different healer and all that sort of stuff. Um, I think he's just, Being fair to Barkley, I think, you know, out of respect to him, he's going to give him every opportunity to try to make this work. Um, I don't see any way he plays on Thursday, um, but that's what he said. And so that's where they're at. Yeah, I think it would be uh, foolish to try to play him on Thursday uh, for, for a couple of reasons. One is you're, you know, you're not expected to win this game anyway. Um, You know, the 49ers are really good. Um, why risk him being out longer uh, when you can rest him for, you know, it'll be 14 days, a full two weeks, more than, yeah, full, full 14 days because they don't play again until Monday in week four uh, against the Seahawks at home. Uh, you'll have plenty of time to with your doctors at home. Um, it, it, you know, it, it sounds to me like he's trying to, to win a poker hand with a pair of deuces. <laughs> so. <laughs> I like that good metaphor. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I would be very shocked if Saquon Barkley played, regardless of what Brian Dable said here earlier. Um, we can get, let's, we're, we'll, we'll get to the assumption that he probably won't play and the impact of that in a bit. We'll, but we're just going to touch real quick on the, on the other items of news that came out of Dable's press conference and literally that just involved injuries. So as as we just mentioned, he did not rule in or out Saquon Barkley for Thursday night. He did. And he said that Saquon Barkley would essentially be a game time decision. The same goes for Aziz Ojolari and Andrew Thomas, who both missed the Cardinal game on Sunday, both have hamstring injuries, both going to be. And I interrupt you just for a second. I took that as, uh Oh, that's not good. If he's lumping him in with Saquon, uh, uh, (laughs) that that would concern me too so yeah i do believe i do believe him on the next one you're about to say though <laughs> yeah so andrew thomas is these those are game time decisions honestly i would not be surprised if all three of them missed the game um and i think we operated under that assumption before the call and regardless of what he said i think we can operate under that assumption after the call um and Ben Bredesen has a concussion. He got hurt Sunday. Just the way the concussion protocol works he's just not going to have enough time to proceed through it and be cleared to play so he is I mean, Dable said essentially he's out. Like so, he but he's out. So no surprise there. So the Giants, I, I believe that. <laughs> yeah, in all likelihood, the Giants will not have their left guard Ben Bredesen. Likely not have, I would say, probably not have their left tackle Andrew Thomas. Probably not have um, 
Aziz Aziz Ojolari, one of their better, one of their two top outside linebackers, and uh, I would say probably no Saquon Barkley either, or likely, however you want to phrase it. So that's where they're at injury wise. Um, yeah, uh, obviously it's a really tough game. We're, we'll get to that in a minute, but like, 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 I think just just to catch up now, that's where the Giants are at health wise. Um, just to catch up on just like the insanity of of this one on one start, like on a whole, and then the game on Sunday, the Giants, as you know, in their week one lost 40 to nothing. It was their worst home loss since 1943. Uh, they go into halftime still having not scored a point. They were down, you know, ag- in aggregate 60 to nothing on the year. Uh, to the, and they were losing 20 to nothing. One of the, one of the worst teams in the NFL and the Cardinals first time since 1934, the Giants had not uh, scored a single point in the first six quarters of the season. Uh, so again, another way where they rewind the clock in uh, a negative way, but then they proceed in the second half to storm back. Um, and they were down by 21 points, about three and a half minutes left in the third quarter. And they come back, beat the tie, beat the Cardinals 31 to 28, tying their biggest comeback in franchise history. They, they also did it in 1945 and 1949, uh, 21 point comeback, uh, just remarkable on every level. They had this insane second half offensive surge. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, just so much to really wrap your head around. And and it was so long ago that in 1945 and 49, I, I wanted to see like how this comeback stacked up, like how late in those games were they down by 21 points, right? It's one thing to be down in the first half, but back then in the box scores, they didn't have like times of score. <laughs> they just had like the order of the scoring and within the quarters, they didn't tell you at what time of the game the, the points were scored. Anyway, it's been a long time, obviously, since the Giants had on three fronts, anything like that's happened during the, so it's an insane one-on-one start, uh, obviously. Um, but yeah, look, I mean, how, how do you even wrap your head around all that? Well, I, somewhere on my computer, uh, there, there's a, there's a graph that says against the Cardinals, who many thought were the worst team, many going into the season thought were the worst team in football. Maybe the Giants are the worst team in football. Uh, that'll never that that paragraph will never see the light of day. Never saw the light of day. Uh, I, I wrote two stories on Sunday, uh, uh, and one of them uh, was just practice. Uh, but you know, it is, it is an, as you put it, an insane start to the season historical uh, in a horrible sense on opening night and historical in a uh, in, in the other sense, a, a happy sense from Sunday's game. Uh, yes, it was the Cardinals, but anytime you're down 28 to seven uh, in, in the third quarter, uh, you know, it was 20 nothing at halftime. And then you think, oh yeah, they, they scored here. You know, they're back in this. And then the Cardinals went right back down the field and scored again, got a two point conversion. You're like, Ugh, but you know what? Daniel Jones and the offense was could not be stopped in the second half. I mean, they were were not stopped. I mean, they touched down their five possessions, touchdown, 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 game winning field goal, uh, four for six on third downs. And the two they didn't make, one they made it on fourth down, uh, with the, the, the they used the tush push, uh, got a first down to keep a drive alive. And then the, the other time they didn't get convert on third down was when they were just setting up Graham going to kick the, the game winning field goal. Um, you know, it was, it, it was stunning to watch. It really was stunning to watch. And uh, you, you and I both know Darius Slayton is one of the best quotes, if not the best quote in that locker room. And I had gone up to him after the Cowboys game, in which he ran off the field without even shaking hands with the Cowboys. He was so uh, upset about the way that game went. He, you know, he called it his worst loss of, of his life. Uh, said he had never been a part of anything like that. And I went to him after that game, after Sunday's game, and said, well, you said you never seen anything like what you saw last week. How about this? He goes, I don't think I've ever seen anything like that either. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, what a weird one-on-one start. Um, and now you go to San Francisco. Uh, you, you, had they lost that game, you know, the argument could be made their season was in jeopardy, uh, in serious trouble because – now, now you were looking at 0-3 uh, against San Francisco, you know, especially going in this banged up. And you, you look at week four, Seattle. Seattle just uh, went into Detroit, who had beaten Kansas City on the road, went into Detroit and beat, beat the uh, Lions. And then you're on the road at Miami, 
and Buffalo, and you could have been staring at 0-6 and, and oh, oh, you know, what a uh, what an awful thing that would have been. But now, you know, now they got hope. They do have hope, that's for sure. Um, now, does that mean they're going to win Thursday? I think that they would – no one's expecting them to come out and play in, in that game on Thursday like they did in the second half offensively because if if you look at it, the Giants in week one had 171 yards, their, their fewest by 54 under Brian Dable. By halftime in Arizona, they had gained 252 yards and had zero points in uh, six quarters. They came out in the second half and had 358 and hung 31 on the Cardinals. Now, it's electric. It's fantastic. The Cardinals – are not a very good team. Obviously, they're a bad team. Um, do we know what do we know about these Giants? I don't think we know a lot. They're resilient, which we knew, but I don't think we know a lot yet about their ability to truly put together a complete game and especially to do it. Now, again, it's early to do it against a, a legit opponent like the Niners. This is a really tough game, and I wrote this for this morning. It's probably going to take the best coaching job yet so far with the Giants uh, by Brian Dable for the Giants to win this game. I mean, we're just assuming here that now Ben Bredesen gets hurt in this in 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 the Cardinal game. Mark Lewinsky comes in, plays right guard. You can get to some of the particulars of that. I thought it was interesting later on. And so uh, he had been benched. Lewinsky had. So they have they now they're going to have even more moving pieces on this offensive line going into this game. No Bredesen likely almost obviously no Bredesen probably no Andrew Thomas probably no Saquon Barkley it's just a lot for this offense to have to overcome against a really really good defense on a short week on the road um it's a lot and I think that that's why it's going to take the best coaching job yet by Brian Dable who last year they only beat three teams with a winning record Minnesota Baltimore Jacksonville Jaguars had an average defense the Ravens were really good defensively and the, the Giants but the Giants beat them in East Rutherford Lamar Jackson and hand, hand, excuse me handed him that game and and the Vikings had a really good defense on a whole but they were kind of exposed as frauds down the stretch so I think that that for many reasons this would be the best coaching job and most impressive win by Dable even though it's a regular season game and not a playoff game if they're able to pull it off I don't know if I see it but uh but yeah I, I it, you want to get in a little bit into the offensive line because we talked about Saquon Barkley it goes without saying the impact his absence would have what about them trying to run Matt Breida behind what is now a patchwork line? Yeah, yeah. If, if Brian Dable wins this game, he's the front runner for the coach of the year again. Uh, but the, the offensive line, it's it's it's, it's a fascinating uh, mess right now. That And for them to put up the yards, and I don't care whether the Cardinals are any good or not, uh, given what they had. I mean, going into that game, think about what they had going into that game starting after benching Glowinski. They had a center playing his second NFL game. They had a right guard playing his first NFL game, first NFL snaps at the position. Uh, the, the left guard was the most experienced, was Bredesen. He had uh, made 11 starts in his career. Uh, left tackle was Josh Azudu making his third career start, his, getting his first snaps ever at left tackle. And at right tackle was Evan Neal, who's made, who started most of last season. He missed his stretch hurt. And he's the guy they're most concerned about right now because he continued to, to struggle against the Cardinals, had a bad – had two penalties in that game, including one that could have been costly, uh, a holding penalty, got the Darren Waller touchdown call back. Uh, now you're looking at Thomas again, possibly without Thomas again this week, without Bredesen. Uh, you know, I got to think, though, if, if it wasn't broke, you don't try to fix it, right? You go with the Zudo again at left tackle. Uh, you, you play Glowinski, who hadn't played left guard since 2017, I believe, when he was with the Seahawks. Uh, and he hadn't played extensively since his second season, 2016. Uh, he, you know, the silent count is something you do on the road, obviously, for noise. And he, he wasn't like the, the Kate, he starts the, the left guard starts the cadence, and he wasn't all that he hadn't practiced, obviously, he wasn't all that familiar with, with how to do it. He figured it out, and he, he actually played a much better game uh, at left guard than he had at right guard when he got benched. Uh, the, the week before it, it, it's just amazing what has happened to this offensive line when Thomas gets healthy uh, and Bredesen gets healthy there's going to be a lot to sort out but right now they just got to get through Thursday they do um and yeah so I think I I agree I think they'll go Azudu from left to right Azudu Glowinski Schmitz obviously McKeithen and Neil uh Let's say, all right, so then then what do they do 
And then this this throws a weird monkey wrench into it, right? Because Glowinski came in and he played well. So what do they do when Bredesen and Thomas are healthy again? Which is going to happen. I mean, those guys don't have really long, long-term injuries. Uh, you're going to go Thomas at left. You'll probably go Bredesen at uh, – okay. So the options are uh, – you know what you know what the, the three center left right tackle will be, right? You have Schmitz, Thomas, Neal. What do you do with the guards? Uh, do you do you go Bredesen right, Azudu left? Do you do Bredesen left, Glowinski right, or Bredesen left, McKeithen right? I think those are the three possibilities, right? They are, except, uh, and I raised this in my story about the offensive line today, what if, what if Evan Neal continues to struggle and Josh Azudu continues to play well at left tackle. He played pretty well. He had a false start penalty on the first play of the game, but then played pretty well at that position. Uh, you know, I, I think he, looking back at his college career at North Carolina, he played mostly at left tackle and left guard, so he hasn't really played the right side of the line. But if Evan Neal continues to struggle, and you got a guy who's playing a good left tackle, would you – Consider, I mean, I know he's the seventh overall pick in the draft. Uh, hard to hard to give up on somebody you've invested that much capital, draft capital in. Um, but it's something to think about, at least um, if you're the Giants. You know, because it's not like it's not like uh, Evan Neal has just struggled for one or two games here at the start of this season. Uh, it, it's it's been a long stretch now that he has struggled as as their right tackle. Very true. I mean, to, to your point about Azudu, uh, well, you just look at the grades from Pro Football Focus here. Uh, uh, Glowinski wound up playing uh, 37 of the 68 snaps. So, But Glowinski graded out, to your point, uh, 66 overall, pretty good. 78 in pass blocking, quite good. And then 60 against the run. And Azudu was basically the same, 65 overall, then 78 pass block and 60 in the run block. So not a lot to be concerned about necessarily with those two guys. Um, McKeithen also solid, but uh, you know, I'm not going to bore you with the numbers, uh, but we'll, right. we'll, the numbers with Neil, man. Wow. 45 overall grade. His pass blocking wasn't as bad, but it was not great. 54 in pass block and 54 in run block. Uh, and he had a 25 pass block the first week of the season. So He's graded in the 46, 45 range in two straight games, which is not acceptable. You can't, you can't have that. I mean, he did not give up eight pressures like he did in week one. He gave up two pressures, but he had the two penalties. Um, and for the season now, he's given up 10 pressures and it's just not good. It's not good. No, it's a, it, it's a, a big concern that they got to figure out. Um, you know, again, like I said, you, you just got to get through this week, but you know, the thing about this week is you're facing a different animal in the 49ers than than the Cardinals. So, we'll, even those guys who played pretty well uh, will be dealing with something entirely different um, on Sunday. Uh, that guy named Joey Bosa, he's pretty good, I think. Nick Bosa. I mean, Nick Bosa, I'm sorry. But what you said is true. Joey Bosa is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, he doesn't play for the Niners, but um, – I, I during the Super Bowl last year, I kept calling uh, um, Jason Kelsey Travis. So <laughs> I, I have a problem with brothers. I was going to say Travis and Jason look quite different, whereas the two Bosa brothers, there's a bit more facial similarity. I think. I guess even Joey has longer hair or, or did. Um, and so, yeah, that I mean, he's going to be a bear for the Giants to deal with. Uh, so there's just all that offensively hovering over this. I think if we just put a bow on what we're talking about offensively, uh, some hope here because as, as let's work our way from the inside out. We talked O line and then Barkley. Jalen Hyatt had a really impactful game uh, in his second game, and that's exactly why the Giants drafted him, the deep threat stuff. And then Darren Waller, 76 yards. I think he's now off the injury report, by the way, with a hammy. He showed no ill effects of it. Um, so certainly some hope there, but like, how long is Jones going to be able to sit back there if they know they're going to be – this is the same thing the, Jet, the Jets ran into in Dallas. Like, you – kind of the reverse, though. Like, without Aaron Rodgers back there, they knew they were going to run the ball. They could stack the box against the run. Without Barkley, um, you got to wonder if the Niners are going to look at the Giants and say, "Oh, they're going to, you know, they're not going to lean as heavily against the on the run. Let's let's uh, go after uh, Daniel Jones because he's, you know, probably going to lean on Waller. 
uh, that sort of thing. So, yeah, how, how is the passing game going to be able to get going in this game? With this line against this front, they're going to need probably another big game, certainly from Waller, but from Hyatt too, who, who you know, showed flashes. More, more than just flashes, it was certainly really encouraging to see what Hyatt did. It, it was. I mean, it, they certainly, uh, you know, they've they've dealt with it. They've they've played certainly plenty of times in the past without Saquon Barkley in the 2020 season almost, um, and did, did not play well. You know, it's hard to it's hard to um, figure out uh, how important uh, Barkley is to the Giants. He obviously is a great player. And he obviously was very important to him last time when they finally made it last year when they finally made it to the playoffs. But the thing is, they've been bad for so long. Uh, you know, until last year, they were bad with him and they were bad without him. Uh, he, you know, he was a great player, especially his rookie year. Um, I, I looked up a thing today. Uh, since since he's been here, the Giants are two and ten against winning teams when they didn't have Saquon Barkley. Wow. Uh, I, I suspect I hadn't looked up what they were when they had them because they were probably weren't good against winning teams either. But, you know, he, he's obviously going to be missed the games. They won. Wayne Gallman was actually filled in great for him uh, in 2019. I think uh, they won a game at Washington. He had, he had a really good game, two TDs, uh, but got hurt the next week, had a concussion the next week and never really played great the rest of that season. Um, you know, they, they, they need, and Matt Breed is a pretty good player. He's a very competent NFL player. They're going to have this running back by committee against this team. You know, we're going to get to see him and Brightwell and probably Eric Gray. Um, but they, they're going to need to at least try to run the ball to keep them honest to your point about them pinning their ears back and coming, coming at Dan Jones, the giants, at least are going to have to try to run the ball and see what happens. Yeah, I mean, yes, for sure. If the ball security stuff will be interesting to see with Eric Gray, who's kind of shed that bad reputation he had earlier in his college career with the help of DeMarco Murray uh, during his time at Oklahoma. Let's see if he's able to, They're, you know, you know the Niners are going to know he's a rookie. Obviously, they're going to go after the ball. And let's see if he's able to hang on uh, and, and be a consistent player for them. And just switching gears, uh, no, I think that kind of sums it up offensively, but to the defensive side of the ball, like the Giants – are not winning a shootout against the Niners. Period. They're not. Not not pretty much if they had all their healthy players and not not in this case. Uh they're not scoring likely 31 offensive points against the Niners. All right. And so their defense has to play better. The Giants defense has got some serious issues right now. Serious. Uh, they, they they have some serious issues. What they don't have is a sack or a takeaway. And and they they do have some pressure, seven of them in two games. I, I figured out yesterday, looking at pro football focus, there are eight players in the NFL right now who that was before last night's game, eight players before last night's game who had more pressures than the Giants. Yeah, PFF actually had them with 15 pressures as a team in that game, uh, in, the, in the last game, and six in week one. So I don't know, maybe the you know what? I must have misread it. Yeah, so if you go to the – but still, I will say this. Like, so you look at this. They had 15. So Dexter Lawrence had five. He was great pass rush-wise. Leonard Williams had four in that game. He was great pass rush-wise. Another underwhelming game for Kayvon Thibodeau, a 51 pass rush grade with two pressures. Uh, once again, no one is doing much of anything besides – well, Leonard Williams, very good game. Besides Dexter Lawrence, they're not getting enough pressure. Um, now – yeah, let's see how this adds up. It went five for Dexter Lawrence, four for Leonard Williams, two for Thibodeau, two for Micah McFadden, one for Zimenez, and one for Isaiah Simmons. Is that 15? Yeah. Well, that's nine and uh and six is 15, right? So, but 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 just goes to show you, I mean, sorry, but like one pressure is not like an impactful performance. Right. Um they have had they've got some issues, certainly. Deontay Banks graded 39 in coverage in that game. Uh, right. and that stuck out big time. Uh, Xavier McKinney, 54 in coverage against Arizona. Uh, not great. <laughs> I mean, so no. that they've got to get that fixed. I mean, the, the first week it was a door and Trey Hawkins played, played well, 79 coverage grade. Uh, Dory Jackson played better than he did in week one, a 60. So, uh, they need to have a game where all of their, their, their secondary gets it together 
and, and plays consistently. And they're maybe they're able to get more pressure from someone other than Dexter Lawrence. Yeah, I mean, and and the someone you'd like it to be Kayvon. Um, you yeah, know, he's he's the guy who is the you know advertises the star wants to be a star, and you know, last year he he missed the first two games. In in some ways, he's missed the first two games again this year. Uh, but he needs to really show up against the Niners. He's scuffling. He's scuffling. I mean, the last the, his, his three. The worst three pass rush grades he had last year. Uh, the f- the number four worst was a fifty nine. Then below that was yeah. a, no, was, was a fifty. He's definitely scuffling. Yeah, he had a fifty four, a fifty one, and a forty nine. So that was like the bottom of his production last year, and this year he's come out with a fifty six and a fifty one. So I mean, this is this is not what he expected. It's not what the Giants expected. He has two pressures in 43 pass rush snaps. It's not good enough. It's not good enough. Um, and so the spotlight will be on that even brighter in this game because Brock Purdy's a young quarterback still, remember. He, he is, and he's he's been sacked, I think, four times this season. So he can be sacked. You can you can get to him. You know, he's he's never lost in a regular season game. He's 7-0 in the regular season. Uh but he, you know, he is blessed by lots of weapons. That is one thing uh, to to watch out for. Is Brandon A. Uh, is is uh, on their injury report with a shoulder issue, and uh, you know they didn't really practice on Monday, but he was listed as not participating in practice. Um, so that is something that would be a bit of a break for the Giants if he wasn't able to play. Oh, for sure. Um, so this is a supremely talented Niners team, and as far as the injury report, it's Tuesday as we're talking. Uh, and we'll have this podcast up for you shortly after we're done. The injury report for these Thursday games comes out on Wednesday, so that's why it'll be another day before you see these injuries, uh, you know, the official report. But, uh, yeah, I mean, some of this will come right down to, to kick off with Ayuk or Barkley or whoever, um, Andrew Thomas. So, I, I, I look, I, I think that there, this, it was a great win. It was a great win for the for the Giants. There's no doubt about it. Um does it mean that they're not going to stumble throughout this early season gauntlet? No, it doesn't mean that. Like they could very well go out and lose this game and then each of the next three. And then what are we talking about? Then no one's no one's hanging a hanging a banner for what they did in the second half in Arizona. They have to build on this. They you know, they have to put a consistent game together. They have to get healthy. They got to put a consistent game together against not just a bad team, but a good, te- good teams because they got four, three other good teams coming up, two of them on the road. Um, they got, you know, I, I know everyone's really happy about the, this game, but the, not only, the, I think the Barkley injury obviously puts a damper on it, but so does the reality of, of what they, they did in the first half. Yeah, it, it, it really does. Uh, you know, and to your point, what this, the schedule, um, you know, just, just a really, really, tough schedule for these first six games. Uh, and how many of them are you going to be without Barkley? Uh, and, and then I think game seven is the, the commanders who have started two and oh, you know, just to, 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 to go back again to how important Sunday was, you know, if, if they lose that game, they're Oh, and two, every other team in the division is two and oh, and you're in, you're in deep, deep trouble. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's uh, overstating things to say that they saved their season on Sunday. Oh, they absolutely did, given they, it maintained the wiggle room that they benefited so much from last season with the hot early start. Um, you know, you're talking about a team here that has, after week one, they go seven of 10 on the road. Um, now they're in the, the second, they're leading into their second of those seven road games right now as they prepare for the Niners. But it's it's just such a tough gauntlet, which is, I guess, redundant. But um, you, as you mentioned, the commanders are no pushover. We'll know a lot more about this team as as we've said in the wee hours of the sixteenth of October, the late hours of the fifteenth after that Sunday night game in Buffalo. Um, but let's just say Saquon Barkley. the The initial prognosis was that he would miss. Uh, it had been reported by ESPN as three weeks, right? So if it's three weeks, that kind of takes you out of the, out of this game, out of Seattle, out of Miami, with a potential to return against the bills on the 15th of October. So 
Again, I don't think he plays this week. Now, maybe could he on the 2nd of October or the 8th of October against Seattle or Miami? Yeah, but um, let, let's see. You know, like, let, let's see. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, it's 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 all up in the air it is, as far as Saquon is concerned. And, you know, why – certainly why rushing back in, in this game against the 49ers? That just – that just seems so foolhardy to me um, to even even consider. Um, you got to remember too, like, and it's not a high ankle sprain, but in 2019 he came back after a three game absence from a high ankle sprain, and by his own admission, he came back too quickly. It impacted him negatively for the rest of the year, and um, not every injury is the same, but it's the same ankle, it's the right ankle, um, and so you wonder if they rush him back, how that would impact the rest of the season. You're not talking about rushing them back for a playoff game. This is an important game, but it's not going to make or break their season. Uh, and so I don't think they're looking at it like, oh, well, we're going to lose anyway. Uh, but I think it's that you definitely have to look at things in the bigger picture and, and be smart, which, which teams generally do. Uh, they do. They definitely do. I mean, that's that's the way they played it with Andrew Thomas on Sunday. Uh, and I, I think they will again this week. Um, but you, you can afford to lose this game. Uh, you don't want to lose two games because you, you know, something something happens to, you know, we're talking when we're talking to Andrew Thomas and and Saquon, we're talking two of their three, four best players, five best, players, two of their five best players. Uh, you don't want to lose this game. Have one of those two guys get far, you know, injure themselves worse, and now you're talking about losing the next game because you're without them again. So. A hundred percent. And uh, we only briefly touched on him, but like Daniel Jones played out of his mind in the second half, out of his mind. I mean, just insane. Uh, I had written, speaking of things that never saw the light of day, <laughs> I had written uh, now, granted he, his interception in the first half went off Barkley's hands. This is the second straight game that happened. The first one was a pick six in Dallas. This one, I think led to a field goal, but it, it was a drop that went right into the defender's hand. So that's two picks right directly on Barkley, not on Jones. But Jones had not played well in the first half, and I think I wrote at halftime, like, you know, something along the lines of he hadn't justified his contract, and he hadn't until that point. It was still early, obviously. But, man, did he come out in the second half? I, I think it's, it's this whole notion of that he's like, oh, he's worth every penny. Like, okay, like, yeah, it was a great half. It was great. Um, and that's why you did pay him. But you also paid him to do more than just play well for two quarters against the Arizona Cardinals in week two. He, they had saved the season. Like, let's see him build on it, especially against a really good defense. It's going to be a lot on his plate uh, with this little patchwork line and without Barkley. Uh, it's going to require something just shy of heroic. Right. Just, I mean, it kind of goes back to my point about, you know, it's hard to tell what whether the Giants, um, you know, what they were and what Saquon means uh, in the past, and, and looking at it from a past context, because, you know, supposedly, and I think it is true that Daniel Jones is a lot better quarterback than he was when he was without him in 19 and 20 and 21. Uh, it, there was a miracle game in there that the Giants did win when Colt McCoy was a quarterback uh, Seattle. In, yeah. in Seattle. That was, that was a miracle win for that. Um, and Seattle was 12 and four that year. Um, they wanted 17 to 12. They, they needed a deep, I think they got a defensive touchdown from Xavier McKinney in that game. Um, but, um, you know, this is this is another reason you pay Daniel Jones because when something happens to Saquon Barkley or something happens to one of your better players, this is what great quarterbacks do. Uh, they 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 make they can put masking tape on things and, you know, make the right decisions and play the kind of game that needs to be played to win. Now, I'm not going to fault Daniel Jones if he doesn't beat the San Francisco 49ers on the road uh, on a short week without the guys he's going to not have. But you would like to see him stand up and play one of his better games. Um, you know, I, I'll go back to I'll go back to week three last year when the Giants lost to the Cowboys at home. Um, they didn't play a particularly great game. They lost by seven. But if you go back and watch that game, Daniel Jones played his butt off that day uh, under uh, under heavy, heavy pressure from the Cowboys, kept the Giants in that game. Um, that's the kind of thing you'd at least like to see from him um, against the 49ers Thursday night. 
And then they went out and rattled off four straight wins to get themselves very much above water at six and one. They beat a bad Bears team. Then they went to London and had that crazy win over the Packers. This next week, a crazy win at home over the Ravens. The next week to go to Jacksonville, had that insane win with a Fabian Moreau goal line stop. It's three straight weeks, Dable smoking the cigar on his way out of Jacksonville. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I think that that even though that was a loss, a seven point loss to the Cowboys in week three last year, a bit of a springboard in terms of the confidence, maybe for Daniel Jones. Um, so something to that. Uh, I think that's a really good point you just brought up. So, well, but the, the reality is they're here with uh, with a with a tough hill to climb. Uh, and so we'll we'll give you our picks. Uh, I'm just going to wing it because I have not given it much thought. But what do you what do you think? How, how are you going to pick this game? Yeah, I'm gonna. I, I, I can't see the Giants winning this one, given given the circumstances. Um, I like the the Niners, thirty one to thirty one to seventeen. As you before you were saying that, I was gonna go thirty four seventeen Niners. Uh, I'll pick it even. I'll just pick different numbers, thirty four to fourteen Niners. Uh, again, I don't think a lot of sh- not, not a lot of shame in losing this game. Uh, I mean, I guess unless you lose it 40 to nothing, um, but uh, the Niners are a great team. The Giants are undermanned. They're in a short week. I know they stayed in Arizona to, to do these walkthrough practices Monday, Tuesday, but yeah, uh, probably not happening for them. It would just be an enormous upset victory if they were able to win this game without Ben Bredesen and Andrew Thomas and Saquon Barkley and Aziz Ochalari. I would expect all four of those guys to not play. Um, so Anyway, we'll see. Everybody, uh, in the meantime, be sure to rate, review, like, subscribe to us on uh, wherever you listen to podcasts. And uh, enjoy the rest of your week here. Well, really just today and Wednesday and get get geared up for that Thursday night game. And then a little bit of extra time for Seattle on a Monday night. We'll see where the Giants are at. And Bob will be in touch, obviously, uh, through the magic of technology from uh, across the country. Enjoy your time out in Arizona. Thank you. Uh, Well, it's almost over. Heading to San Fran tomorrow. All right. We'll talk to you soon.